characters and events are based on true fictional stories. The following may contain violence not suitable for all audiences. Due to employee shortages and low budget, scenes may not fully resemble fictional places, and due to said poor quality, should not be viewed by anyone. Our scene begins as our little piggies run frantically for their lives, one to their house of straw, one to their house of stick, and one to their house of bricks, chased by a hungry and mean wolf. The wolf slowly approaches the first piggy's house. She points and says, go away, wolf, but he knocks on the door. Little piggy, he cries. The little piggy, scared and terrified, cowers in her house. The wolf then blows the house down, but to no avail. The wolf then realizes that he himself has asthma and cannot blow this down on his own. The piggy takes advantage of this. She screams and thinks she scared him away, but little does she know the wolf then returns with a leaf blower. So she makes a frantic run to her sister's house made of sticks. Meanwhile, back at the straw house, the wolf blows the straw house over. The wolf then peers inside to see if he can find the little piggy. Realizing she escaped, he follows her over to her sister's house made of sticks. He creeps up slowly. Little piggies, he cries. And the piggies know that he's there. They run to the brick house where their sister should be. The wolf, without knowing, blows the stick house over. The wolf then creeps around the side, looks in, realizes the pigs aren't there. Where could they have gone, he cries. He then follows them to their brick house, knocks on the door and says, little piggies. He then tries to blow the house down, but being made of bricks, it doesn't budge. So then... He tries again, frantically trying to blow the house down, but instead has a heart attack, falls over, and then the piggies seek their revenge. Hey, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed Wolf Knight Shyamalan's version of The Three Little Pigs. Due to staffing shortages and a slight cold, the third little pig was unable to film with us, which super stinks. But I got you next time. Also, I'm running a little behind on this video, so by the time this comes out, it's not Halloween. But, it's post-Halloween special. In this video, we're going to be painting the old pewter Demon Prince of Nurgle. One of my favorite models of all time. I painted it four or five times already. Hopefully, this will be the last time I'm painting it. And it looked, it came out really phenomenal, so I can't wait to show you. So without further ado, let's dive in, let's get spooky, let's get painting. Speaking of spooky, here he is, the Demon Prince of the Hour. Here's our Demon Prince of Nurgle. He is primed all black and in a few subsections. Wait till you find out he's in more subsections later accidentally. Anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to come in with some white ink and we're going to basically zenithly highlight everything and the reason why i'm doing this is honestly counterproductive because i'm not painting in a way that's going to benefit from this this is purely for me to see where i want to put the highlights later so it's an extra step why i'm sure there's a more efficient way to do it but hey hashtag amateur painter not professional so we're, we're doing it this way and honestly you know what i'm not one of those guys who are like oh look the sun rises in the east and it sets in the west and we have to perfectly triangulate exactly where the light patterns show on his vibrant voluptuous skin you know what it's the 41st millennium hashtag grimdark you know this is grimdark they ain't there's no suns there's probably suns but honestly that for this guy the sun was devoured probably by galactus it, Yes, I crossed Marvel into the 41st millennium. So I'm sorry if that made anybody super cringe. Next step we're going to do, now that I got off my high horse of highlighting, we're going to come in with Titan Buff. This is one of my new favorite paints. Honestly, if you can get it, go out and pick it up. Because it is almost exactly the same as Games Workshop's Wraithbone. Wraithseer, Wraithbone. The contrast 
base paint that isn't gray sear. It's, it's almost identical. It's phenomenal. Anyway, so now we masked off all the skinny bits, all the fleshy bits, and we're going to start base coating the armor. And the cool thing about Death Guard is the color scheme, the color palette for their armor is phenomenal. There are so many cool ways that you can paint Death Guard, and it blows my mind. Obviously, it's one of my favorite armies, so I'm a little biased, but it is what it is the cool here's a little throwing one out there for you a little fun tidbit when i was younger i had a group of friends that got me into warhammer and they were like hey let's go to games day and you can pick out an army and i was like oh my goodness really this is going to be so freaking cool come to find out we go there and every army i picked they're like oh well you can't pick that because so and so's that army so you gotta pick a different one it ended up coming down to two separate armies, one of them being Death Guard. And this Demon Prince of Nurgle was the first model I ever purchased. He was the first model I ever painted horribly with craft paints and enamels. Yeah, fantastic. So, I digress. What we're doing right now is we're going to take that dark base green... And we're slowly going to start mixing in the Death Guard green. And that's what we're going to use to build up our highlights. And like I said earlier, I'm not, I'm not a professional. I'm not out here in the ways of highlight science. I'm just slapping down highlights where I think they should go. You know, at the end of the day, it's your model. You put highlights where you think it would look the coolest. Because nine times out of 10, the less thought you put into it, the better it comes out, the happier you are with it. Now, at this stage, we're gonna mix in some Nurgling green. This is gonna be our brightest highlight color. This is where we're gonna stop highlighting. Right here, Nurgling green. Get it all nice and bright. He's not gonna stay that way for long because I got a special thing coming soon later in the video with a new technique that I learned. So anyway, so right now, looking super vibrant, looking fresh he's ready to go armor wise he's ready to go to the next step of which is painting his crotch cover crotch cloth loin cloth crotch bandana i don't know so we mix a little bit of weather wood into the red to give it a pinky kind of color because I have an idea that I want to try out and I hope it works, but I'll tell you what, I'll save that for when that part comes up. So now we're going to come in with some plague bearer flesh. This is my favorite zombie stat, you know, slash decaying fleshy kind of paint scheme here. And I love it. And we're just going to paint over all the skin. There's a few parts that I kind of want to miss with that and not get in there. Like the tear in his arm where all the muscles and stuff are showing because I don't want that to be yellow tinted. I want it to be nice and gory later. So we're gonna kind of miss that and try not to get it all over the place, you know, just keep it neat. Now we're gonna come in with some Blood Angels Red. This is the part where I was saying. So I was like, okay, so we got a few highlights going. We're gonna put this Blood Angels Red down and it's gonna look super nice. Well, huh, wish somebody would have told me that Blood Angels Red Contrast paint is super vibrant and it just overpowered everything else. Because it didn't do what I wanted it to do. But it looks it looks super nice. Honestly, the Blood Angels Red Contrast paint is phenomenal. It's a good paint. I'm going to try to paint something Blood Angels-esque in it. To see just kind of how it comes out. It's super nice. Now, the next second important step of painting zombie flesh. Is coming in with Gilliman Flesh Contrast Paint. And Contrast Mixing Medium. And you're going to put this all over the fleshy bits. All over them. And this is going to give it a little bit of, I would say, warmth and a little more skinny feeling. He's not super jaundice. Now, lucky for me, his body fell off his legs. So, just in case it ever happens again, we're going to paint his crotch chainmail. This is the second layer of defense to protect his genitals from any oncoming attacks. 
honestly, when he's together, you don't even see this. So it was kind of an unnecessary step. But I'm like, you know what? He falls apart so much. We might as well do it anyway. Now, I haven't found a good way that I like painting metallics yet. Metallics are probably one of the hardest things for me because they don't really act right. I don't, I guess I just don't understand them perfectly. But the way I do it is I base all my metallics in silver and then I go back over it with either your gold or your bronze or whatever. And that's how I build it up. Eventually, like I've said before, I do plan on learning non metallic metals just to kind of, you know, test it out and get out there. I don't think it's a very viable form of painting something if you have a lot of models you want painted for an army but that's just me it is a cool thing to learn though it, it's on my bucket list all right so after knocking out some of those bony pieces you know nurgly boy out here getting a little bony with that awesome titan buff color hashtag pick it up we're gonna come in and we're gonna start painting the little circles on his crotch robe cover thing and we're going to work on the fly on his arm now the fly on his arm what i wanted to do is i wanted it to stand out i wanted it to look super cool so in my mind i was like you know what wolf let's make a nice transition so we painted the body of it black and then the wing section like a gray that transitioned to white and for some reason, I forgot exactly how to record things where everybody could see what you're doing. So for this process, the recording isn't the best. And I am terribly sorry for that. I didn't go to recording school. I just kind of wing it. You can't see me shrugging my shoulders. By, no, see, this guy just keeps falling apart. Driving me nuts. I also learned something else about stuff like this, which I'll, I'll talk about a little bit later. But we got them glued back together and ready to go. The next color that we're going to come in with is some Avalanche Sunset. And this is like step three of my favorite way to paint rotting disgustingness. And that's all the pustules, all the little pus bubbles. We're going to paint Avalanche Sunset. Make them all nice and gross. Don't forget to paint his tubes. His tubes are a vital part of his lifelong longevity. Totally got confused on where I was going with there. All right. So the skin's looking really good. Now we got to highlight the skin. We're going to come in and we're going to dry brush Flayed One's flesh over the skin. Then we're going to come in and then we're going to take... You, you don't have to use what I'm using here. You could use any deep red or deep reddish magenta kind of paint but just make sure it's a wash it needs to be wash consistency and you're going to paint all the lesions all the weird things in his skin with this to make it look like it's sore it's gross and disgusting all right metallic time we're gonna come in and we're gonna slowly figure out how we're going to do this without messing up and getting it on the armor that looks super fresh not the grocery store but the phrase all right so we got that done we're going to do a little bit we're going to paint his little leg eye because just what everybody ever should need is an eyeball on their leg looks fantastic And so far, we're, it's it's going pretty well. Now, the, the, this part of it was a lot of experimentation. A, I've never used this wash before in my life. I have no idea what I'm doing. I am winging it and hoping for the best. It's the best way to paint. Just just throw things around and hope it comes out good. Why not? And honestly, it came out pretty darn good. Those little triangle sponges are phenomenal. You should pick those up also. Get them on Amazon. I'm not associated with Amazon. I get nothing from it except a lot of packages because I have a buying issue. We're going to put a little highlights in with some bright silver. 
and then we're gonna experiment a lot more with it. Now, off camera, because I forgot to record, I did put a little um, oxidation on there just to kind of help out. We put our Gorilla Glue together. We got our guy together. He's ready to go for the step I've been waiting for so long to do. We're gonna come in with some streaking grime. This scared the hell out of me because what you do with this enamel paint is you cover the whole model in it. I was like, oh my goodness, this thing looks phenomenal. This is the best I've painted it to date. And now I'm gonna ruin it by spraying this all over it. Cause I sprayed it all over. But the thing is, is this streaking grime for anything that you want grimy or nasty, dirty, th this technique is phenomenal. It took him from B to like maybe a B plus. No, it, it really took him to the next level. So what you do is you spray the whole model with the streaking grime, and then you come back in with a sponge or a Q-tip with mineral spirits or white spirits, and you dab, not aggressively. Don't, don't dab super hard like all the edgy teenagers. You just go in and you just kind of gently dab away the paint up oh, and there is stupid hand fell off. Damn you games workshop and your pewter models. Anyway, so you come in and you, you dab it off. You leave all that dark grimy shit in the shadows. And it, it just, it does wonders, man. Like it looks phenomenal. It took it to a whole new level and it is looking amazing amazing the next step is we got to do the base we're gonna come in with some astro granite debris and we're gonna lay it down all over the base so after laying down the astro granite debris i decided to experiment with toxic puddles to see what i could do my experimentations went way off the rails and i screwed it up and I didn't record it because I was too focused on trying to fix it because I was mad at myself for screwing it up. So from the moment of laying down the Astro Granite debris, jumping to what the base somewhat starts to look like. So let's get back to the video. Okay, so after that mishap of screwing around with this base for ever, trying to get it to look right because I screwed it up experimenting, but that's the beauty of painting you try new things, you fuck it up, and you do it again. It's beautiful. It's a it's it's an art form in itself. So another golden paint is their their fluorescent color range is phenomenal. They're transparent and they're great for OSL. I've never done OSL before, and that looked freaking awesome. I loved it. I was so happy it came out because I'm like, I'm spraying this green shit all over my model, trying to do some OSL, and it's going to ruin it too. But it didn't. It looks cool. We're going to come in with some dead tufts, make it look a little wastelandish. And we're just going to put them in randomly wherever we want to put them. Just kind of lay them down, make it look cool. And here he is. This is the finished product. Five times of painting him. And I finally got him to a level of where I think he's absolutely awesome. This is by far, I think, one of the best older sculpts that Games Workshop put out. It's, it's just phenomenal and I love him. So anyway, I'll see you back at the Hobby Desk. Well, he's finished. He looks disgustingly amazing. And a lot of it is thanks to this streaking grime by ak this stuff is amazing you should definitely use it on your zombies your monsters your death guard your tanks vehicles whatever it is phenomenal now the only downside of it is it's an enamel based paint and you have to use mineral spirits to clean it up so with that being said use a mask use a respirator whatever you need don't breathe that junk in it's not good for you and I wouldn't recommend it for everyone. Well, mostly everyone, except for kids under the age of like, you know, I guess like 13 or whatever. As long as you're supervised or whatever, you, you know. Who am I to give advice? Use it. It's great. So, that concludes this week's video. This is the post-Halloween special. 
I hope you enjoyed. And until next time, I'll see you at the Hobby Desk. Thank you.